Hi, let's talk about consideration number two. And in the 10 considerations, number two is don't give yourself a hard time about anything. That's the problem. I mean, we judge ourselves more harshly than anybody else could possibly judge us. We have something inside of us called the inner voice or the, let's see, I remember reading it about it a long time ago, but it's the voice of judgment, the V-O-J. They can take many different forms. Uh, Clarissa Percola Estes talks about it. Uh, in her book, Women Who Run With Wolves, it's about this thick. One of my favorite books of all time. Goes into all kinds of things. She tells stories and then these stories then interpreted in Jungian psychology and it's just right on <laughs> perfect stuff. <laughs> I got a lot out of it. Okay. So what I decided about consideration number two is I needed to go, you know, personally for myself a little more in depth into this thing about not giving yourself a hard time. And I thought, well, perhaps it has something to do with being a grown up, not being an adult, you know, not being all adult, like, you know, deciding that this is what an adult does and this is what an adult doesn't, but it's about, um, being a grown-up and number one in that is create expertise create expertise and put something you're good at in the movie um, Uptown Girls with Brittany Murphy and a young Dakota Fanning uh, the now deceased Brittany Murphy's character was extremely irresponsible, never owned up to anything, and was less of an adult than the little girl, Dakota Fanning. And Dakota's character said to her, well, what are you really good at? And by the end of the movie, we find out that she has indeed grown up and is quite sweet. It's a very endearing movie. You should see it. Uptown Girls. So we've got that. Establish yourself with something you're good at. Cultivate it. Cultivate it. It's like a garden. You gotta weed. You gotta en encourage the strong growths. <laughs> it's like that with everything, huh? So life is a garden. Number two on how to be a grown-up, meaning own up to your place in the world, is you come to terms with your sex, meaning male, female, in between, whatever it is, come to terms with sex, beliefs about God, your nationality, and your generation. We all have different experiences. I'm feeling tension in my forehead. <laughs> I'm working on my beliefs about all kinds of things, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the things that I realize is that um, it's sort of like not looking at your life as um, it's one of the it's one of the inherent uh, considerations is when you recognize and acknowledge that you are where you're at and you've been given what you've been given and it's time for you to cultivate yourself and to not make excuses, which goes into don't promote. Don't de-promote yourself by arguing for limitations. Promote possibilities. Yeah? So, coming to terms with where you're at in life, you know, being a white chick, being born in 1980. Excuse me. <laughs> burp. <laughs> um, remember when people couldn't burp in public or on video without it being awful? Think about that society. Yeah? So, okay, find safety, meaning where is your comfort zone? There's all this talk about not ever leaving your, uh, okay. There's criticism out there for people who are in their comfort zone but don't leave it. Granted, they've got a point there, but the comfort zone is not a bad place to springboard from. So find your comfort zone. There's all these beliefs out there that change, change, change. Change is going to happen anyway. 
walk outside in the wintertime and, and tell me you can wear a bikini. You can't. Unless you're in the polar bear club. And that's a different story. Then you have to go swimming and anyway. Here's another big one about being a grown-up. It's isolation. Surround yourself with people. Not every single day. You have to have alone time. But don't isolate yourself. Don't go into this funk and then withdraw and isolate yourself. And in one of the considerations I talked about was that when you are going out into the world, find what interests you. Like there's, there's something out there that is called play date. Um, Julia, Julia Cameron, yeah, she wrote all those creativity books. And as a side note, she was directed to go back to being a housewife and not write, and she's very successful. So she was a grown-up. She became very good at something, and now she's making plenty of money at it and helping people's lives at the same time, which is what being a grown-up is. You get to a place in life where you are going to be able to give to others because you've had enough for yourself. That's truly the mark of a successful person is somebody who has so much abundance that they can give freely. Healthy boundaries is very important. I talked about that in some of my ranting about the ex-stupid neighbor I used to have. I, it, I may have taken it down from my, my channel, but uh, my, uh, I'm not even going to complain about it. I don't want to be a crap magnet. He's out of my life now. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it's really important to acknowledge successes. I have that in my considerations. I'm sort of repeating myself here, and these videos are a way for me to remember it, so then when I do my book, I have a cohesive unit because I am going to create a book. Again, it's going to be a user's manual for the Earth Dweller who is experiencing a bad camping trip, thanks to Brian DeFlores of Lightwave for that. You have to see his website. It's Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, DeFlores, D-E-F-L-O-R-E-S. He's interesting. I took this great class with his, of his, and I'll talk to you about that in the future because it was really interesting. I went from having hot flashes every single night to um, going through... Two 90s and donning a third after this alignment was galactic bodies of energy and paramagnetic alignment. It was just crazy. And it was after that, hot flashes went away. So if anybody wants to get rid of their hot flashes, actually, that was my unique um, outcome, I, I've been told. <laughs> uh, gratitude list. We talked about that, playing the glad game, um, naming three things that you find endearing about somebody in your life. Uh, every day in a journal, put in three things about you, you know, that you really um, love about you. You know, we talked about how oh, I love my henna hair. <laughs> okay, and if something's not working, you know, Change it. We all have heard this. Maybe you haven't. What's the definition of insanity? Knock, knock. No. The definition of insanity is if something's not working that you're doing and you keep doing it anyway, <laughs> that's insane. That's crazy. That's craziness. That's crazy. So there's something else I added here to how to be a grown-up, and it was to understand the family and the culture you came from. We talked about coming to terms with sex, beliefs, God, nation, nationality, and generation. You know, also, you know, somebody that you know in your family maybe was given, like, extra good looks and somebody else was given extra athleticism. Get over it. You know, do... Some of the cutest, most amazing people, like Roseanne Barr, okay? Tell me she was given athleticism and good looks. All right? Look what she's done. So here's where I'm going with it with family. Take a good look at them. Approach them at every single family gathering as if you're an anthropologist, okay? 
you're not trying to change anybody and you're not trying to do anything because the family patterns have been set as the family we're born into. Things are going to keep going on the way they're going on. I gotta stretch for that one and massage my neck because I tell you, it can be very stressful when I visit my family. Something always goes down, but like I've always said, you gotta put the fun into that. I think I spit when I said that. You have to put the fun into dysfunction. So get a notebook, call it field notes, and like keep records, you know? In my family, one of the things I noticed when I keep records is when you have a conversation with them, you can't just go on and on and on. You have to make a point. And you have to make that point within a given amount of time. It's an undetermined amount of time, but you have to make a point. Otherwise, they will find out that you aren't going to make a point, and they will run you, they will run you down. They will steamroll you. They will, they, will, they will then interject whatever it is they're going to interject, and they will probably make you feel crappy. That's what my family is very good at doing. Um, not my brother, not my sisters. I'm talking about my mother. <laughs> yes, one bad apple, one bad apple. And um, I love her, mom I love you, but you know what, you are something else. <sighs> I recognize that breath work is really, really good. There's a three part breath to get all the lungs into it. So you inhale, you exhale. And inhale part of the way is belly. Then midriff. You hold it in between. And then all the way up. Hold. Now if I were to do that without talking, it'd be much more effective. But mm, I could use some good hands right about now, right there. All right. Book recommendations. How to just better align yourself with your own needs. That's a good book. I haven't written it yet. <laughs> but this is where we're at. Um, oh, last thing. Find your, oh, two last things. Find your fun. Again, make a, what Julia Cameron calls an art date is unbreakable. So you're not just doing all the things you should be doing or have to do, but you're doing fun things. So you're finding your fun. Maybe you're going to a playground and swinging. Some people's hips don't let them do that. Find your fun. Do, do something else. Do whatever it is. Maybe it's buying new shoes. Maybe it's playing. Um, it could be playing with your dog and the ball or your kids. But I'm talking about, yeah, whatever your fun is. Whatever makes you feel like expanded and happy and light. That's your fun. Okay? Last part is watch the words you use to talk about anything. And it goes back to the, are you arguing for your limitations? Or are you entertaining possibilities? So it's such as somebody were to say something to you and, oh, I can't do that. You know, immediately defeating yourself. Or somebody comes up with a really good idea to help you with promoting your business. And you're like, well, that would never work with my business. I mean, you can't be doing that. A grown-up is somebody who actually owns their stuff, stands up to the plate, takes a look within, you know, it's the, it's the examined life. Doesn't mean you have to not be fun anymore, remember? It just means that you, um, you take responsibility. You take responsibility for yourself. And that's where I'm at. That's why I'm sharing. Thanks for being there.